Okay, so this is editing files in Linux. Remember, in Linux, everything is a file, and almost everything is a text file. So what we're talking about are tools to edit text files, which is still a very big deal in Linux. In the next more advanced video, we're going to actually start editing some of the configuration files that you might run into. For this one, we're just going to create a really basic file and show you how to do it. A couple of things I want to point out. One, there are actually a, literally a bajillion editors that are available in Linux. Right? They've measured it. A bajillion. There's a lot. We are going to focus on VI and the modern iteration of VI, which is VIM, V-I-M. And we're doing that because every Linux system has VI installed. Every one. Um, whereas, you know, the other text editors we might learn, you know, Emacs is also very popular among programmers. Uh, you know, uh, there's Kedit. There's a million editors. But only VI is on every version of Linux. Uh, and you can actually install it on Windows, too. It is an incredibly powerful text editor. Um, all right, and let me show you, there, there's also a graphical version. If we click over here on Applications, and I think it's under Accessories, there's GVIM, right? Graphical VIM. We're not going to use this one, but know that that's there. And this is usually actually slightly more efficient. But again, if you're working on a version of Linux that doesn't have a GUI, a graphical user interface, this won't be available. So this has the type of buttons that you would expect file and you can open and it's got a save button in print but we're going we're going to ignore that for now but i want you to know that it exists uh, we're going to click on the terminal and open up our terminal window and we're going to type vi and when we type in vi it actually opens vi improved because that's what's installed on this system uh, and it gives us the version and that it was invented by bram moliner um, and it's got a few different uh, commands that might help you here. You know, uh, colon Q to quit if you ever want to exit and just get out. And then the help and the version. Um, so the first thing I want you to notice is the interface that we're looking at. Um, by the way, this whole file edit search, this is all st stuff that comes up because this is a fairly advanced uh, Linux operating system. That won't always be there. So we're going to ignore it. That doesn't normally show up in uh, most Linux operating systems. We're going to only focus on what's inside the window here. So first notice all these tildes along the left-hand side. That is a blank line. That means there's nothing there. So it always means that you're at the end of the file. Um, <clears throat> look at our cursor. Our cursor is a great big square. I'm going to hit the I and... oh. In this version, our cursor didn't change. In many versions, the cursor becomes the thin bar. But I also want you to notice at the bottom of the screen, insert became apparent. I am now in insert mode. This is where you normally want to be when you're adding text to a file. So I'm going to type, uh, hi, how are you? And then I'm going to hit enter. I am great. And then I'm going to hit enter, and then really, you smell like death. And then we'll put a blank line at the end there. So I cannot type anything into the screen until I go into insert mode, right? Um, when I started, I was in command mode. And if I hit escape, you see that insert goes away there, and I go back into command mode. So, that might seem a little confusing. When you first get into it, you can't just start typing things in. You have to hit I first to go into insert mode. That seems really counterintuitive to most of us. Because most of the work you guys do as students, you sit down, you create a file, and you start adding things to it. But honestly, most of the work you do as an administrator, uh, even as a programmer, is searching and editing. So you don't actually need to start creating most of the time. That's why Vim is set up this way. So it's really optimized for searching and moving through the files. Speaking of which, how do we move through the files? Well, I'm going to put my fingers on what's called the home row, right? If you remember the home row, my 
uh, pointer fingers on the J, my uh, long, my middle fingers on the K, L, and semicolon. If I hit the K, I go up. If I hit the L, I go to the right. If I hit the J, I go down. If I hit the H, I go to the left. So L and H are right and left. J and K are down and up. And you're probably thinking that sounds like the least intuitive way you could possibly move around in an editor. Yes, because we're used to using the arrow keys. But we're used to using the arrow keys because we actually work very inefficiently. This is called home row computing because my fingers never have to leave the home row to move up and down, left and right. Whereas if I'm going to use the, the arrow keys, I need to lift my hand up and go over here. And, and, you, and you can actually still use the arrow keys. Um, don't, but you can. And, but then I have to put my, my hand back and I have to look both times. And there's an opportunity to make a mistake. And it, it does really slow things down. Home row computing is much faster once you get used to it. You need to train yourself that L is down, uh, K is up. I don't even know the letters, I just know the feel. And that's the whole point of, of using the keyboard, right? Is to learn the feel of it. So that is how you move up and down in uh, Vim. Now I'm going to copy a line. So I'm gonna go up to the top line and I'm going to press YY. And YY means yank. And then I'm going to press P, and P is paste. Anytime you cut or copy anything, you can use P to paste it in. And we see you got a copy of the top line. So go ahead, you should be following along. Pause this for a second, put in some text, move around using the home keys, and then copy and paste the line. I'm waiting. Anytime now. Okay, did you do that? Good. Now what I want you to do is go back up to the top line and I want you to press five and then hit YY. And you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, it now tells you you have five lines yanked, right? So now I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to hit P again and what happens? It pasted all five lines there. I'm gonna go down again to the bottom and hit P again and it pasted it and I'm going to paste it again. So now I have lots of n nice lines <clears throat> that I can work with. We can start to do some more interesting things. But that's a very key thing we just discovered about VI and Vim. If you press a number before you do any action, it does that action that many times. Let me give you another example. I'm gonna to go to the top line. I'm going to hit seven and then hit J and you see I moved down seven lines, right? Oh, line numbers. A Couple of things about line numbers. First of all, on most versions of Vim, your line numbers are displayed down here in the bottom right-hand corner, right? So it says I'm on line eight, character one. If I, move, uh, if I move down, it says I'm on line nine, character one. If I move to the right, it's uh, increments the character count appropriately, and if I move to the left, it decrements it, yada, yada, yada. Um, so <clears throat> I can also force them to show me the line numbers. This comes up a lot, so I'm just going to show it to you now. Hit colon, and then set NU, and hit enter, and you see now each line displays the line numbers along the left-hand side. Um, this is a boot camp. We're not going to get into the details of it, but you can set up VI so that it does that every time, which I think is really handy. Um, so now when I hit five and I hit J, I go down five lines. I went from line eight to line 13. You see that. Okay. Um, so that's the basics of how we move around in command mode. If you want to go to a particular line, you would type in the line number and then hit uh, capital G. So I'm going to say line seven and then capital G and I move to the beginning of line seven. Um, okay, 
So we talked about command mode, which is what we're in now. That's the default mode. We talked about insert mode. When we hit I and we go into insert mode, you hit the escape key to get out of insert mode. So I put you into insert mode, escape puts you out of insert mode. So we've done what I call command mode, what's often called uh, normal mode. We've done insert mode. Um, the third mode that you need to know is command line mode. And that's what we did when we hit colon and then typed in the command set and u for numbers. So whenever you hit, uh, oh, I'm being here. Whenever you are in uh, command mode or normal mode and you hit colon, you'll come down here to command line mode. And you can do, uh, you can actually execute things on the uh, terminal. Um, the most important thing is to save the work that you've edited. How do you save? Well, if it's a new file, colon SAV, and then give it a name. I'm going to call this dummy.txt, right? And it says at the bottom the name of the file, that it's new, how many characters were written, how many lines were written. If I make a change, for example, I'm going to delete line number six. How do I delete a line? The command for deleting a line is dd, right? That line is gone. Now if I want to save it, I'm going to do command line w. And it shows me that it's been written. And notice now it says 19 lines have been written, one less than, than were written before. I can also save and quit in one move and do colon W for write and Q for quit. And it exits. And if I type LS, we see dummy.txt there. If I want to open it up again, I type VI and then give it the argument dummy.txt, and it opens it up and takes us right back to where we were. All right? So that's the gist of basic editing in Vim. Most important thing, you start in command mode, and you can't do anything then. You have to hit I to go to insert mode. When you're in insert mode, you can add text, but then you have to hit escape to go back to command mode. From command mode, if you hit the colon, you go to command line mode, and you can save either by doing SAV, and then giving it a name to save to, or by doing W for write. Uh, you can do uh, colon Q to quit. Also, sometimes it'll grumble at you and say, like, you know, you haven't made any changes. Are you sure you want to quit? And it won't let you quit. Uh, use the exclamation point to force it, right? So let me show you that. If I get back in. So if I want to quit, I do uh, exclamation point, and that forces it to quit. Um, we move by doing J to go down the line, uh, K to go up a line, L to move to the right, and J to move to the left. Left. If I want to copy a line, I use YY for yank. If I want to paste it, I use P. If I want to delete a line, I use DD to delete a line, and then again, P to paste it. So that's cutting, copying, and pasting, all right there. And one of the most important things you need to learn about Vim Every time you hit a number and then a command, it does that command that number of times. That's the basics of editing in VI. If you just knew that and never learned anything else, you could do everything you ever needed to do as a Linux system administrator. If you have any questions, let me know.